can your trans be too cool if you fit a trans cooler? I see this coming up on uh, Facebook in questions and I get asked all the time about it. So I'm gonna do a little video and explain my opinion on that topic. All right, come for a drive to work with me. Trans temp ambient is 14 degrees, and I want a timer to run at the same time here. Time. All right, let's zero that out. All right, let's drive. So I live in an estate in the northwestern suburbs of Adelaide, and like most people probably live in an estate somewhere, there's a few little back roads before you get out onto the main road, and you sit on, you know, 80 or 90 or whatever speed limit um, until it starts going. On my particular run to work, uh, after a few minutes, uh, and I get up to this, uh, I've got to go over a bridge, so there's a slight hill, I'm doing 90 k's an hour, and uh, I'm in fifth gear. Well, I'm in drive, but it's in fifth gear. And um, this will simulate, if I can get it to work today, if you do have a sick transmission or still converter, if I can get it to work, what, what the symptom is. Excuse the rattles in the back of the car. The back of the car is empty at the moment, so things are rattling around. Um, so, notably, this is for a later part of this video, but taking this stat, we've been driving for four minutes, 1.7 k's. The engine temp or coolant temp is at 67 degrees, and the trans temp is at 26. That will become more important later. Give it a little bit of beans, and as we get up to 90 k's on the freeway, and we're just coming up to that little slight hill. You watch what happens when I slightly accelerate up this hill. Of course, I'm going to put the video up when I record the actual video I want to record, it doesn't do it. It's making a liar out of me. And that's, I think, because we're in spring now and it's been plaguing me throughout the winter and because the working temperature of the transmission is 40 degrees or above. And because it's like the ambient temperature is warmer now, it's not like it was in winter, I'm not seeing it. But what I'm trying to dem demonstrate is a fluctuation in the taco on light throttle going up a hill. And that's, you know, that's showing you that the viscosity of the oil hasn't got hot enough. I wanted to show you what happens. I reckon I might have recorded a clip in winter. I'll see if I can go and find that. into my travel and I'm over the 40 degrees um, working trans temp so we're at normal trans temp like it's going to get hotter but it's it's in its working zone now within oh, it's probably about six minutes to be honest um, note the um, engine coolant temp too we'll talk about that more later too so why did that trans oil heat up so quickly when I've got a trans cooler and I'm moving at 90 k's an hour. Well, let me explain the whole trans cooling and warming circuit to you. We're a bit low tech here, so it's whiteboard time. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you this without getting in the way of the actual drawing. So, down the bottom here, and you're gonna have to, if you're looking at this on your phone, maybe this is one to put on the TV at home. Okay, this is our cooling circuit. Uh, we have uh, the sump where it all starts. The trans pulls oil from the sump and it goes up through this heat exchanger device. Aha, uh -huh. you might not know much about this because we haven't really talked about it a lot. What this does, over this side, uh, coolant from the engine cooling system goes and there's actually like a, a heat exchanger uh, around the oil filter. That coolant also goes into this second heat exchanger. I'll show you a dissected version of this thanks to Rodney at Wholesale Automatics but essentially coolant from the engine comes in because that's usually hotter because it's 
water, basically, um, and the engine heats up, that up really quick. And then we've got trans fluid coming from the trans into this device as well. And so the coolant is, in this situation, is heating the trans fluid um, before it goes around to the aftermarket cooler. Well, actually, if you've just got, if you don't have an aftermarket cooler, it'll go um, through the uh, thermostat and the thermostat will decide whether it's going to go through the factory cooler or whether it's going to go um, bypass around and go back to the sump. Um, now, a few things, there's a lot to unpack here because one, we're heating the coolant up. So it's, that's why in the video earlier, uh, you saw the engine temps go up quick and then pretty quickly the trans temps followed it. In a system when we're going through and there's a thermostat involved, um, the thermostat has to decide whether it's going to open or close, whether it's going to go through the factory trans cooler or go around it. All the ones that we've pulled apart, I swear 8 out of 10, um, the thermostats aren't working properly. They're either jammed at an open or a shut position, so you don't know whether it's going through here or not. A lot of them aren't because when we put an additional trans cooler in, we flush this one and sludge comes out of it. So I think it's like the Murray River where you've got a little, little stream bypassing it. There's not much flow and it just gets sludged up in there. Anyhow, um, we more often than not ditch this um, thermostat and put a bypass valve so it always goes through the factory trans cooler. It doesn't have a choice. Um, and we've not seen any negative effect of that even to the point where we'll put on an additional trans cooler and get it even cooler again. But there, then there's these questions that come up. Is it going to be too cool? Is it going to take too long to reach the working temperature of um, the trans? Well, no, as you saw in the video then, it was um, oh, about eight minutes or so and it was done. Um, so, and that's because of this device. It's exchanging the, the hot, the heat from the coolant and putting into the trans oil. Yes, it does flow through all this, but there's not enough cooling effect to make up for it because it always wants to go to its sort of happy medium working temperature. So to summarise, the trans oil gets warmed up when it's cold because it exchanges the heat. Um, and then when you're at working temperature, um, the cooler's job is then to keep it cool. They work together. And in fact, they work with the coolant and the engine oil as well. Let me move the camera sideways a bit. I'm going to draw some other things for you. I apologise. I'm heading sort of down to the darker end of the studio. So we've got shadows and things, but just work with me on this. In the video, I was referencing at zero minutes, the trans temp was 14 degrees, the coolant was 19. About the same, close. As we started driving around the four minute mark, the trans temp quickly rose to 25 because the coolant went to 65. Uh, when we are up to the almost nine minute mark, again, the trans temp got to 44 and the coolant temp got to 82. And, you know, the coolant temp's going to stay between, you know, 85, 95, something like that and fluctuate up and down. The trans temp's going to keep going up, but because of that heat exchange that I talked about earlier, um, those two keep working together. Let's do some scenarios now, which um, I've seen out on my travels. Let's say now we are towing a three ton caravan uh, up a hill. What happens? Um, lots of heat happens. So the engine, I've, I've seen the engine uh, coolant temp go up to like 105 degrees, um, especially before I had the trans cooler fitted. Um, now, with no trans cooler, no, no additional trans cooling or no additional bypass, so we don't even know if the factory cooler is working, the trans temp also gets hot. And at, on the worst day ever, I've seen it like, you know, in the 90s, I'm gonna say 95 degrees. So a heat exchanger is designed to move, you know, thermal mass from one place to another. So at the moment, um, these two are trying to equalize. So the difference here, what's that? 10 degrees difference. So the equalising effect is, is very minimal. The, their, their thermal mass is going to retain pretty much the same. Um, when we put a bypass valve in, we'll do the same result over here, 105. Um, but with a bypass, this would quickly drop down to 85 degrees. So the difference between the two, hopefully you can see this, um, the difference between the two is now 20 degrees. 
So they're trying to equalize, so chances are the transmission oil is cooler and it's trying to cool down the coolant. So you actually get a cooling effect in reverse. We'll go to another sort of degree, like when we've got uh, uh, the wholesale automatics trans cooler fitted, you know, we'll keep this at 105. Wrong color, sorry. Black, 105. Um, but this might now be at 75. I don't know what color I've got now. <laughs> Sorry guys, 75, there we go. So now there's 30 degrees difference because we were able to get the trans um, oil much cooler. So now these two are trying to equalize and this is gonna bring the coolant temp down. So not only does a trans cooler improve the cooling of the trans, it improves the cooling of the engine and the whole thermal mass of the vehicle. So like it's, it's such a good thing to do. So is there ever a reason where a trans cooler will be a bad thing for your car? Well, if you live in Australia, no. Um, maybe if you're, I don't know, in the snow or something like that, but with our Australian conditions, it's never getting that cold that, like, that it's not going to get over 40 degrees. Um, like, you know, if you're in Mongolia or something like that, or Alaska, maybe, but the heater circuit is going to warm up that oil very quickly and as long as you've got it in that working temp, if you think it's a particularly cold morning, maybe let the car run for a few minutes before you start, you know, putting load on it. But the benefits so much outweigh the downsides. Um, not getting to those hot temperatures, as soon as you get right to a, you know, into the 90s, you're basically cooking the trans fluid and um, it's never gonna work the same after that. The only way, you know, if you've had one of those events is to get rid of it, flush it out, put new stuff in, and that's the best chance at repairing um, your trans, essentially. Um, in the beginning days, we could put some stuff in called anti-shutter, and, and that was like a band-aid, but it's just delaying the inevitable. But there are some sick transes out there. Mine's one of them. I did the first, I don't know, 90,000 Ks without any sort of trans cooling really pushing it with um, you know 35 inch tires towing three tons it's supercharged so I don't hold back going up hills and so forth it, it's um I, I know my stool converter is a bit sick and um, I'm starting to see when I've got low viscosity uh, as in like the temperature hasn't got to its point yeah I am starting to see that fluttering sort of thing gonna happen but it's been doing that for since Christmas and it hasn't got any worse so I'm just going to keep driving it for the moment. Um, but people keep saying on Facebook whether, you know, the transmissions are, you know, bad in these cars. Well, they're not. You've just got to understand them and you've got to service them like any mechanical component. And the less um, heat cycles you can put your transmission fluid through, the longer and better it's going to perform. All right. I hope you got something out of that. And, um, keep doing these sorts of videos uh, the su subscriber account's going really well lately I think that might be because of the Ford Rangers but if you are a patrol owner and you like this video and you haven't subscribed do us a favor press the button it shows good things to YouTube all right see you next time yeah yeah